into this place and this space as we gather around tea and coffee, have fellowship informally and nonetheless still here to worship God because the church is wherever God's people are based. If you want to see the sanctuary at the end, family, I'll, I'll open up for you and uh, you can have a view. And I'm sure Elizabeth uh, can let you into the glass as well. Let's gather ourselves together in the call to worship. And when we're in Catholic Church, we say this together rather than just me saying it. So I'll count you in three. One, two, three. Be on your guard, stand firm in faith, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. Some of our singers are now going to sing to us a song called Turn your eyes upon Jesus. I know it well, apart from the end of the show. Are we going up? We could sing one more. Yeah.
Still got some bounce in my knees. Just not telling you about the shooting thing and the other legs. <laughs> so this is our refrain song that we sing every Sunday. Uh, verse 1 of 198 minute paper. Did you know it well? It's on the screen. Let us build a house. together. Justice and, and if the Lord's disciples kept silent, these stones would shout aloud. Lord, open our lips. And our hearts shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God and Heavenly Father, as we gather in this place and have already expressed how life is tiring, we ask on this day of rest that we know your rest through the Holy Spirit. We take a moment, Lord, and we quieten ourselves not only in action, but in heart and mind. You took breath within us to give us life. And so we stop and we breathe, Lord, because this is your place and your space where you seek to minister to us and to renew us. So let's breathe and know the touch of God's Spirit. Lord, the world is a heavy place and in these days in which we are living it seems even heavier. So we breathe, Lord, and we lay down our troubles at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. And we listen and think once again of his words. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So forgive us, Lord, for all that we pile upon ourselves rushing hither and thither, here and there, being pressured by things that you don't wish for us to be pressured by. And help us to make space as we believe in our lives for you. So be, O oh Lord, by your Holy Spirit in our worship today. Speak to us through voice spoken and sung. Through the words that we read, through the activities we do, over the coffee and the chat that we have, that when we leave this place, we will do so knowing that we have met with our God 
and be with his people. To the glory of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever to be praised. Amen. Okay, the exercise, I want you all to just read. That's what. And once more. Having cleared our heads a wee bit, uh, we're going to have a reading from Psalm 146. Psalms. Praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord. 
and not what the hope of the world is what stored in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to you. Is it not the rich who are exporting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into the court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him? If you really keep the royal law of finding scripture, what your neighbor and yourself, you will be one. But if you show favor to you, you sin and are convicted by the law and all greatness. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at one point is guilty of the greatest. For he who said, do not sin, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, sin is not murder. Sin is an act of those of those who are judged by the law, but if we, because judgment without mercy, if it is shown to any who does not do not mercy, triumph. What good is it, my brother, if a man claims to have faith at the end of Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without faith in the name of you. If one of you says to him, No, I wish you were, be born in the world. This is not good. This is me. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself.
or dip into your paper Bible. I thought I'd give myself to say that. Paper Bible. Uh, and let's read together the word of the Lord. <laughs> Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered the house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as they heard of it, and a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syria, in Phoenicia, and she begged Jesus to drive out the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children keep all they want, he told her, but it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed. And the demon are gone. Amen, and thanks be to God for this is most holy word. And to this name be all the glory and honor. Let's have our usual short prayers. We're going for this segment. Lord, open our ears that we may hear. Touch our minds that we may understand and move our hearts that we would respond to the things that you have to say this day and forevermore. Amen. Who really likes a good story? Yeah. When I was a wee boy, I didn't like Billy Bunter. Now, for those of you who are old enough to know who I'm talking about, you know who I mean, don't you? Billy Bunter. Didn't like it. Wasn't sure as a child why I didn't like it. But as an adult, I now realise he was a public school twat. <laughs> you sure? Do you like Billy Bunker? <laughs> <laughs> but I did enjoy the adventures of Mark Twain, so you Americans should be going, Woo! Woo! The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, written by Mark Twain. And one story goes that on the banks of the Mississippi, Tom Sawyer and his friends were seeking out new adventures. Then one fateful night, they witnessed a murder. Never go that way, Billy Bunker. The boys of the parish would swear that they would never reveal their secret <coughs> and run away to the pirates and search for hidden treasures. But when Tom gets trapped in a cave with the murderer, the question is, can he escape unharmed? Well, to get good, do you know the answer? If you have any red book, go home and read it. Get a copy. It's an old story, but the adventure is just as good. And I picked that story because, you see, Huck Finn is the epitome of the social outcast. A free spirit, always being an object of suspicion and persecution to most. But not to Tom. To him, he is a great fascination. He sees in Huck a self-preserving refusal to conform a route to freedom from the oppressive manners of a god being small town. It's difficult 
And increasingly, from a Christian perspective at least, we are now living in the Western world and societies where we can quite easily be the odd one out. And the story that's given to us by another Mark, Mark, the gospel writer, brings us to a person who in that story is something of an outsider. And I want to pick up in that theme just for a few moments. But before we do so, get the Bibles in front of you, and this is on the screen, so you're going to have to do a little bit of work here. And those who are less familiar with the page of Scripture, I'm sure somebody can help. Go back to Psalm 146 and find the verses 7 through to 9. I'll give you a few minutes because each step you get doesn't have to stop this part. Yep, Psalm 146. Every time I encourage people to open the Bibles, I remind folks that that is the central authority of our faith. So, Psalm 146, look at the verses 7 to 9. And then maybe one brave soul amongst you can read those verses out. Okay. So if you want to volunteer, the easiest way to do this rather than me is to jump all over. Oh, there we go. We'll see. Okay, so how's your fingers? I now want you to go to the second reading that we had, which is James chapter 2. And I particularly want you to home in on the verses 5 to 6. Okay? So once you've found that, I'll give you a moment or two to read over verses 5 to 6. So that's James 2 and the verses 5 to 6. James 2, 5 to 6. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, God chose the poor people of this world to be rich, faith, and to possess the kingdom which he promised to those who love me. When you dishonor the poor, you are the Lord who oppress you and grant you before the world. The rich, they are the ones who speak evil of that good name, which has been given to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thanks for that again. Okay. So, we have those verses. I'd like to think we can go to Mark's gospel, the reading that we've just had. What I'm going to do, because uh, we're going to do a bit of work on this, is read over that whole passage that it's entitled. It's not a long one. So if you go back in your Bible and hand us a few people, I'll get into it on the screen. So it's Mark 7, and it's the verses 24 to 30. Okay? And Heard me read it, but I want to give you a time to put your eyes on the word yourself and just 
maybe a wee bit longer just to take in the content of that story. So Mark 7 and 24 to chapter Everybody reads that differently, so I'll give you another minute. Mm -hmm. I've got three questions. Okay, so when you're reading it, you don't know what I'm going to ask about the passage. It's not difficult stuff that I'm going to ask. But it's to make you aware of the content rather than just watching over you. So the first question is really, really easy. But the second question, not quite so easy, but not difficult. And the third question is again. The hardest thing you could do is a head around, but we'll try not to do ask anything. Too difficult, too technical. So the first question is How did Jesus wish to go into or enter this foreign territory that he was encountering? And it's in the passage. Talk in a class, uh, quietly and secretly. You know how I like to get away from it all from time to time? I'm not alone. And I keep saying this to people who think that ministers should be around 24-7 and jump when somebody says jump because of your calling. Well, just to be clear on that, I'm always available. But sometimes I need my own space. And that was the same with Jesus. So Jesus went into this territory and he wanted to go in quietly and in secret. It's not in the text, but I think it's not too much of a jump to believe that he was trying to, trying to get away from things, particularly because of where it was, right? So here's a wee supplementary question. What's the region that he's been into? Right at the beginning. Uh, encounter somebody, a woman. Who was she? And what was awkward about this encounter? This one takes a wee bit more reading into text or a bit of background knowledge, but let's see how we get on with that. Who was this woman? And what made this kind of awkward? Not that joyous. That's, that's as clear as we need it. She wasn't a Jew, but she was a foreigner. And the significance of where Jesus had gone to is that <laughs> Jesus' ministry in the first instance was predominantly towards his own people. To the Jewish community. But he ventured out of that region. So what makes this encounter awkward? First one. We don't know that she was even happy with anything about her. That she could be on her own. But she seemed to be a little bit 
Phoenician woman, a foreigner, speaking with a Jewish rabbi, this encounter was extremely awkward. But what I love about it is that Jesus talked with her. And there's a wee awkward bit where he talks about the Phoenicians being like gods. How can Jesus say such a thing like that? But you have to think of this in the entire context of the story. That to the Jewish nation, the Syrophoenicians were basically heathens. And so Jesus was saying, what would you want to do with talking with me? And the woman's reply was absolutely immaculate in the ears of Jesus. So what was amazing about this encounter? That's the third question. What was amazing about this encounter with Jesus? Lots of things about it. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So this foreign woman, who was an outcast and a stranger, faith in this Jewish rabbi. And because of how she responded to him, his gifts have come. And what was the result of that? What was the problem? She had a we healed her daughter. We don't we don't deal well with demons these days, do we? Uh, that's a whole subject matter if we keep the deal for it. All day. But we do use the phrase still, don't we, really in our society, I've got my demons to deal with. Don't we? Or he or she has their demons to deal with. The reason I hear that in psychological terms these days, we scientificize that. That's a real example of meaning my birth. We scientificize that. That's a good word. But is there that much of a difference between the demons and the inverted commas that we talk about dealing with and what people were dealing with in those days? I think the lines of blood and it's perfectly possible with faith to make a difference in somebody's psychological life. In fact, it's well documented scientifically religious people in general, and I'm saying religious rather than just Christian, no man in there, are more healthy, are better orientated, if you like, in life than those who have no faith. As it says in the Psalmist, doesn't it? Only the fool says in his heart for the good of And the reason I emphasize that is that lots of people say they don't believe in God for all sorts of reasons. My wife just said that effectively about somebody who walked away from the Anglican church because of it. All I can say is that's the wrong age. I haven't read it yet. My, my, my head was in more positive things. But I will be there. But people 
go away from God for all sorts of reasons. Sometimes it is because the church is being hypocritical. And it's not just the Anglican church. It happens in our own denomination as well. In fact, I had to warn a church session recently that uh, hearing what you're saying, are you not possibly straying into the area of the prophecy here? To which, to their credit, they said, hmm, maybe. So faith makes a difference, and this woman's faith impressed Jesus so much that he went out with the boundaries of his primary ministry and he healed the daughter of a Syro-Phoenician woman. Now what does that say to us as a group of God's people? We've all stood up in here, haven't we, not so long ago, and we affirmed our faith as one body of people. So we believe in God, we follow Christ, making us Christian. We're saying yes to Jesus. But how we conduct ourselves, how we behave, and most subtly, I think, the attitudes that we adopt make the difference of whether somebody can hear the gospel, the good news, or not hear the gospel. Because, fellow Christian, if you sin publicly and it's seen, the world is all over it. Christians are not meant to be able to laugh. It's funny, isn't it? People who don't believe seem to think that we know how we should conduct ourselves. And there's truth in it. You are my witnesses, says Jesus. So it's expected that because we are his witnesses, that we witness in a positive sense. It's not all about being overly evangelical or being overly preachy. It's about being in Christ and being Christ's life. Did you know that the original term Christian was given as an insult? Did you know that? The, the early Greeks and the Romans called Christians Christians as an insult. The insult was that they're little Christs. They're a smaller version of the Christ to walk this earth. But what did the Christians do? They embraced that. And they said, yeah, okay. That's your attitude. Yeah, we are little kind of Christs. So we're meant to reflect Jesus in some way. And most of you know me well enough that I'm not preaching the gospel of perfection. Because we also read recently, didn't we, on the wall there, that mercy is better than judgment. James said, mercy is better than judgment. So, contrary to what some people may think, Christians don't always, always go around judging other people. But some are possible. But no, that's Christian. And I hope my congregation will reflect that. We don't go around judging people. But what we do see is, see this troubled weather? We have another way of looking at it. And the last week we touched on them, like that we have another way of looking at creation as well. We have different eyes. We are expected friends to have the eyes of Jesus Christ. And look at the world the way he looks. So in conclusion, we looked at verses from Psalm 146 and James 2, and we've dug a wee bit into the Gospel of Mark and the encounter with the Syrophoenician woman. 
tend to get less support with the tech readings for three different parts of the Bible, but here's what I call the thread. So what do you think the thread is where our three readings this morning? What's the thread that forms the all thread? I've hinted at that a few times. Mercy, prayer, challenge. But what I'm really looking for is that those who are different from us, the outcast, the stranger, the person from Florida. <laughs> California. Then on that massive continent, hey. Boston. Nigeria. Nigeria, hey. James. You, you get the top one. Nigeria. <laughs> then you can for the worst. For the worst time. <laughs> and from your point of view, you oh Birmingham. Stop it. <laughs> From the point of view, you use spiders. I'm a foreigner. Yeah. <laughs> Over on the east coast, apparently we talk about bairns. You know what a bairn is? Child. You know what we call them in the west coast? Wings. I use bairns more now because I'm just a softer, nicer term. You know, how's your wing? <laughs> So even when I'm over the, the, the west. So there's a sense in which every one of you could be an outcast or a stranger. And I could be a stranger here. But I'm not. I could accept you. You're all accepted. No matter where you're from. I'm accepted in the name of Christ. So the message for this morning is quite simple actually, I want me to do a bit of work. But we sing it every Sunday for a reason. All are welcome in this place. So will you get back? Pinty that uh, the troubles that people have when they're different from other people groups uh, can be because of where you come from or just because of how people look at you or what's in this world. But we're going to be singing him now. It's about beauty and beauty.
just take a few moments now to pray for this world of which we have been thinking about. Let's come before the Lord in a time of prayer. <coughs> Father, as we've often expressed in both our conversation and our times together in worship, it's not difficult to see how problematic our world can be. When you created this world and you created us, you intended it for goodness. And so we have this strange situation where we look at the wonders of your creation and our hearts are lifted and then we look at the behaviour of mankind and our hearts are tempted towards despair. But we are all part of that. We are part of mankind. But we're set apart, not for self-righteousness, but to be a positive witness of how you intend things to be. And so we strive, Lord, to be the kind of people that you would have us be. So that we might invite the outcast and the stranger to find peace with their Creator and their Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, strengthen your church with all our imperfections. Cleanse her that she might become a pure bride. Help her to be a better witness to this needy world. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for the difference that you make in our lives, for the hope that you give us, and for the way of being that's offered to each and every one of us in Jesus. We give thanks that we've been able to praise you today, O oh Lord, and we've felt your presence. You blessed us with some strangers who are now our friends. Lord Jesus, we give faith and we give thanks that you draw people together for good. So we pray that our world somehow will be drawn together for good. That one day, I believe, we should burn a bit unconfessed that Jesus Christ is in the Lord. Jesus, you taught us when we all pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. The mind is the kingdom. I would like to wonder where's the need that the Angus and the Vienna do the song that they bring to us?
blessing or second blessing to one another. So it's getting to use the uh, There's some fair share of stuff at the back which comes through, as you know, the, the drop in and things for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Uh, but when we've got leftover stuff, we don't like it to go in the bin. So feel free to take what's there. Bananas look as if they're just a bit ready for me. So uh, I like my bananas. Don't like green bananas. But I like them a bit ripe. And I'll keep them right up until they're just about going mushy. I know, I know. I knew I'd get that reaction. My wife Jackie, unless the skin is pure yellow, so I'll touch it. Too green for me. I like a banana to taste with banana. Anyway, you like it, don't you? So the, the, the fair trade stuff's at the back. Feel free to take some of that. It's been a wonderful weekend. We had the Kayleigh. I've enjoyed being with you this morning and I'm um, giving brownie points to those who were at the Cayley and managed to drag themselves out of bed this morning. And to our friends that are here for the first time, it's been good to have you with us. And we do hope that you will consider joining us again at some point. Next week, worship is in the King Blasi Sanctuary. It's going to be a short service, so I don't know if that will encourage you or discourage you from along. The reason it's going to be a short service is we have the Bull Hill Highland Games and Bull Hill Park. We've been doing it for a few years now and we would like as many people to attend that as possible. This church actually has quite a strong connection with the Bull Hill Highland Games. So as Don and Margaret, who live and breathe the Highland Games, are uh, the ones that we started that many years as it now gone? Is this our first year now? Fourth, We had the problem with the pandemic, but this is our fourth year. It's a great thing for the village, and this church is pretty much all in with it. So we'll be having a shorter service so that we can run down as quickly as possible. Hopefully I'll at least be able to join the parade, for, because for some strange reason, Dono with Don and Margaret, they asked you to be vice chairman of the Bow Hill Highland Games. So we try to be as supportive as possible. So I can't go to all the. You were at Prima yesterday, John? Yeah. Uh, so living and breathe. And then he came back here with Margaret and others, wrote the Cayley, and the other trucks this morning. You know what? We're all tired, but I hope after day, today, after our worship, we're slightly more invigorated. I know the Lord is with you, and I'm saying, the Lord is with you into a wonderful afternoon. Let's sing, May the God of Peace go with us. Now, if you are allowed, we are shy about the feelings, but I encourage people for singing this to one another. We're trying to make a wee bit of eye on that. Don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> but a wee glance around the hall, we're all in it together. Let's stand for the blessing. <laughs>